Hey guys and welcome back to the Manager and Forge tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create magnetic walls. So in this example it's something which I've been requested by and they use this example, not the map they want to use but it's just a good example of showing it off. So what we're going to do is the player is going to fall in here, they will hold the left mouse button to be magnetised to this wall, they can drop down onto this moving platform, pull over here, magnetise onto this wall, let go, magnetise onto this wall, let go and then onto this wall. So it's just a nice little kind of puzzle game or something like that, we're basically just creating magnetic walls. Again, I've got an example down here just to show you. So these are going to be one blueprint, quite dynamic, and let me show you what this is going to look like now. So I hit play, you can see we'll fall down here, hold left mouse button, nothing's happening. When I look at a magnet and hold it, we're going to get pulled over, like so. Then if I let go, fall onto this moving platform here, what we're going to do is when we get over to this magnet, looking at it, hold left mouse button, we go into it like so, if I look up at that one and do it again, you can see we're up there and then do the same over there like so and if you don't like how fast it's moving to them, you can change the speed in which it gets to each magnet as well. So like I say, this is what we're going to be making today and again I'll show you down here like so, you just look at it, hold left mouse button, you get pulled over to that magnet like so. So let me show you what we're going to make today, let me delete it and I'll show you how I've made it. So what we want to do first is we want to create this blueprint for our magnets to be in. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to go into a new folder which is in Content, Files, Magnetic Wall. Now obviously you won't have this but this is just where I want it so we're going to create this Blueprint Actor here. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click where you want it to go, which folder you want it to be in, sorry, we're going to go to Blueprint Class and again Actor. I'm just going to name this one Magnetic Wall BP like so and open that up straight away. What we're going to do in here is we're going to add a few components. So the first one I'm going to add is a cube. So I'm going to go to Add Component, I'm going to add a cube and this is just going to be my wall, so I'll name it wall like so. What I want to do with this is I'm just going to scale it out to be the size I want. Now this doesn't matter too much as we're going to be changing this in a minute, but this is just for good reference. So I want my wall to be like that, but again we're going to be changing this soon, so it doesn't matter too much. Then we're going to add another component, so deselect that, add component, and we're going to add another cube like so. This I'm just going to name magnet location as this is where we want the player to go to. So I'm just going to move that a little bit forward like so just off of the wall like that. Don't need to worry about the size, but you can obviously scale it down if you want to. So like I say, this is just where the player is going to go when they get magnetized to the wall, so they go to this location. Again, where you're putting this at the moment doesn't matter too much as we're going to change it in a second. Now what we also want to do is we want to create three variables that we're going to use. So what these are going to be, is we're going to hit the plus variable down here. The first one I'm going to name wall size like so. I'm going to change this from a boolean to a transform so we can get the location rotation and scale so if you compile we can see its default right there which like I say will change in a second. Add another variable this one I'm going to name center of magnetism I think that's how you spell it like so so obviously you can name this something which makes more sense to you for example the location of this or where the player will end up or anything like that but center of magnetism makes sense to me as obviously the player is going to be drawn to the center of the magnet which is where I want this to be like so. I'm going to hit the plus variable one more time and I'm going to name this one time in seconds to move to magnet. It's quite a lengthy one but obviously that's exactly what it does so that makes more sense for me. I'm going to change this from a transform to a float like so. Hit compile like that. Now if we go over to the construction script we're going to set up the size and location of our wall and reference like so. So to do that, like I say in the construction script we're going to drag and drop a reference to our wall like that. Drag out of this and we're going to set relative transform like so, plugging that into the construction script there. The new transform is going to be our wall size transform we made down here, so drag and drop wall size, get that, and plug into the transform there. And what I should also mention is we want to make all of these editable, so we're just going to take this little eye here just to the right of the name of all of our variables to make them editable, meaning that we can change them and edit them for each individual reference to the blueprint so each one can be different, which is how we're setting up the dynamic part. So this here is going to set the size of the wall. Then we want to do the same for the magnet location. So we're going to drag and drop a reference to magnet location there. Out of this, we're going to set relative transform once again, like that, plugging that into the wall transform, like so. And this one again, the new transform is now going to be our center of magnetism transform that we made earlier. So now what's going to happen is whatever we set the wall size to be is going to actually change the transform of the wall. Whatever we set the center of magnetism to be is going to be the magnet location and it's going to move that and change that so that's where the player ends up. So now for compile let's change these default values. So if you go back to the viewport here you can see that that's not actually there anymore. 
so the wall size isn't there as obviously the default location is 000, zero, zero like so so oh sorry it is there but they're all in one together here because the default is just 000, zero, zero. so if we go to the construction script let's change these values actually we're going to stay in the viewport so we can see it happening so I'm going to be using values which I found earlier which are the ones you saw at the start of the video so the wall size I want the location to be 000, zero, zero the rotation to be 000, zero, zero, and the scale to be 9 on the X, 1 on the Y, and 5.5 on the Z, so we get a nice wall like this. Then the center of magnetism, so this magnet location here, I want the location to be 0 on the X, 140 on the Y, and 0 on the Z, so it just comes out a little bit like so. Oh, sorry, I'm changing the wrong spot, I need to actually change the center of magnetism here. So again, 0 on the X, 140 on the Y, 0 on the Z, so now it's out front like so. Rotation, 0, 0, 0, scale 1, 1, 1, like that. And to make this easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the wall and just change its material to be a nice steel material, which you get in the starter content, like so. So now this is the wall, it's a nice magnet, and this is just a reference where the player is going to be. And because this is just a reference, so this magnet location cube here, we don't want the player to actually see or collide with this. So what we're going to do is select it, scroll down on the right until you get to collision, just disable all of its collision, so untick that, no, and then no collision, like so. And then also scroll down more and tick hidden in game, like that. So keep visible ticked so we can see it, and also tick hidden in game so that we can't see it when we're playing the game, but we can see it for a reference like so. So we're going to compile that, and now we're going to go to the event graph and start setting up some code. So we're going to delete all these three events here, we're going to right click, we're going to add our own custom event, like that. I'm going to name this one move, like so. Off of this, I'm going to right click and get player character like so. At the return value of that, I'm going to get the character movement all the way down at the bottom here. And out of the character movement, I'm going to disable the movement. So when the player is moving on the magnet, they're not going to be able to move. So they can't actually move themselves. It'll just be automatic. That way, they don't accidentally break the code or move out of position, anything like that. And then I'm going to right click, add another custom event like so and name this one stop or stop moving or something like that. I'm going to come up the character movement again and then just set movement mode like that and I'm going to set it to walking. So we're back to walking again. So when we start moving we're going to disable the movement and when we stop moving we're going to enable the player to move themselves again like so. So then after this what we want to do is we want to right click add a timeline like that and I'm just going to name this one move to target like so. We won't connect this to anything just yet, so we're just going to double click to open it up like so. I'm going to set the length of this to be 1, and you're going to want to make sure that you set this to be 1 a second as well, as we want to edit this with the play rate in a second. Then we're going to add a float track, I'm just going to name this one move track like so. Right click in this, add key to curve float with a time 0 and value of 0, so it's all the way at the start. Right click again, add key with time of 1 and a value of 1, so it's all the way at the end. So now our timeline is going to go from the beginning to the end, like so. We can just close the timeline like that. Now what we're going to do is, you can see under the components on the left here, we have move to target. That's our timeline reference here, so we can just drag and drop that in, like so. Get move to target, or whatever you named your timeline. Out of this, we're going to set play rate, like so. Plugging that into the disable movement, and then that going into the play from start of our timeline, like so. So now we can edit the length of this timeline without having to get in and change all the keyframes and stuff like that. This way is just easier. So to do that, we're going to drag and drop a reference to our variable called time in seconds to move to magnet, like so. So you drag and drop get. Out of that, we're going to get a float divided by a float, plugging it into the bottom value, and we put in the top value as 1. So it's 1 divided by that float. We're going to plug that to the new rate. So this just means whatever time we have in this float here, it's going to basically be how long the timeline takes to complete. And then we're also going to come out of this move to target again, get a stop, and that's going to come off the set movement motor walking from our stop custom event like so. So when the player wants to stop the magnet, or deactivate it, anything like that, so you can call this activate, deactivate, whatever you like. It's also going to stop the timeline so that wherever the player is, they're just going to fall. So that will work perfectly like so. Now to actually move the player using the timeline. That's also very simple. What we want to do, we want to come out of the move track and get a lerp vector, like so. The A we want to have as the player's location. So we're going to right click and get player character, like so. 
out of this, we're going to get actor location. So it's the location of the player currently in the world, like so. And then for B, what we want to do is we want to have that as the location we want to go to. So that's this reference here. We made this cube, our magnet location. So we're going to drag and drop that in like so, and just simply get world location like that, plugging that into B. So what it's going to do is it's going to go from the player's current location to this magnet location here. So the reference we set up of where we want the player to go to on the magnet. And now what we're going to do is come out the get player character again and set actor location. So it's going to actually move, plugging that to the update. So every time the timeline updates, the new location will be the return value of this up here. So this is it done. This is going to actually move and stop the player along the magnet. So it's going to take the player to the magnet. And we need to actually call this, but this is the main chunk of code done for actually doing it. So then we can compile, save, and we can close that as that's all we need to do in here. The rest of the code is going to be in the character blueprint. So I'm going to open that up. So that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But for you, this could obviously be third, first, or whatever you've named it. In here, I'm just going to find some empty space. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to get a left mouse button event, like so. You can create an action mapping, but I'm just doing it this way for the moment. What I want to do for this is out of pressed, I want to get a line trace by channel like so. So this is how we're going to do it. So if we are looking at the magnet, and I would recommend doing it this way as it prevents it from breaking because otherwise we'd have overlapping collisions if you did it with collision boxes. So I just think that having it with a line trace, so if you're looking at the magnet, works a lot better and a lot smoother. And I know that from trying out many different ways when I was testing this code out. So let's do it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'll drag and drop a reference to my camera in here like so. Out of that, I'm going to get world location. Out of that, I'm going to go straight into the start of the line trace like so. Out of the get world location, I'm also going to get an addition. So a vector plus a vector, plugging that into the end of the line trace like so. And we'll get back to that in a minute. Out of the camera again, we're going to get forward vector like so. Return value of that, I'm going to get a vector multiplied by a float. This float value here is how long you want the line trace to be, so how far you want the player to be looking. I'm going to set this to 3000, but you can set this to absolutely whatever you like. And then that is going to go into the addition node there. So this is now the line trace done, so this is going to enable us to have to look at it. So it's going to get the camera, get the location of the camera, set that as the start of the line, then it's going to get the forward vector and go 3000 units in front of the camera and have that as the end. So it's basically going from the camera's location 3000 units forward and that is drawing a line. This addition here keeps it going in a straight line. And then just above this I'm going to right click add a custom event. I'm going to call this check line trace or check magnet anything like that. This is just so we can loop this so we're always looking at it and that's going to go into the line trace as well. well actually sorry first that's going to go into a branch. So we're going to hold down B left click to get a branch like so. We're going to right click this condition, promote a variable, and call it can check question mark like so, like that. And then if we compile, we're going to change its default value to be false, so untick it like so. Out of true, that's going to go into the line trace. So this branch here will essentially break the loop. So when we're holding left mouse button, we can check, and when we let go, we can't. So if we aren't holding the left mouse button anymore, it's going to break the loop, meaning it will stop checking. And to have it like that, we're going to come at the left mouse button pressed again. Off of pressed, we're going to set can check to true, so tick it, and released, we're going to set it to false, so leave it unticked like so. And like I say, this is just for the loop that we're going to set up in a moment. After the line trace here, we're going to hold down B, left click to get another branch, plugging the condition into the return value there. So that's if we hit something. Out of the out hit, we're going to break hit result. So if we hit something, we want to check what it is. So we're going to come out of hit actor, and we're going to cast to magnetic wall BP, like so, or whatever you named it. And that will go into the true of the branch. So we're basically checking to see if the line trace has hit something, and if it has, we're going to see if it's a magnetic wall, as that's obviously what we want to hit. If we have, so off of as magnetic wall BP, we're going to call function move. So if we hit something and it was the magnetic wall, we're going to move to that wall using the function that we set up earlier. If it's not, we want to loop it. So we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay like so, setting the duration to 0.001, just so it has time to finish this code before looping it again. Off the completed of this delay, we're going to call function check line trace. So this is going to loop it. This is going to go off the cast failed and the false of that branch. So if we don't hit anything, 
or if we do but it isn't the magnetic wall it's basically just going to check again until we let go of the F mouse button so we don't want to check. So that will work perfectly like so. Now off of this set can check here I'm going to come all the way out of that actually I'll just do it yeah no we'll come all the way out down to under this check line trace here and we're going to get an is valid node with the question mark there. The input object of this is going to be as magnetic wall VP like so. So basically the magnetic wall is valid. We're going to come out as magnetic wall again and call the stop function like so. Is not valid, we won't do anything. And the reason we're doing this is because when we let go of the F mouse button, we want to stop moving. So that's when the player wants to deactivate the magnetic wall. So we're stopping it, but we're only stopping it if we have actually hit it. So if the player holds the F mouse button, but they don't hit the wall and let go, it's going to try and stop something which isn't there. So it's going to have an error. So this is valid, just prevents that from happening. So we'll only stop it if it is able to. So we can compile, save, and this should be the code done. We can minimize, and now let's place in these walls. So again, content, files, magnetic wall, magnetic wall BP. I'm just gonna place these in around here, like so. So I want one there, one down here. So I'll just rotate that, like so. I want one here and one here. And obviously you can put these absolutely wherever you like. This is just where I want them to be as this is quite a good example and show off of it. So now if we just select one, so I'm going to select this one here, you can see we have wall size and center of magnetism and time in seconds. So what you can do is you can change the size of the wall and the location of it and rotation and all that good stuff. I don't want to do that because the size is fine for me. And then you can also move the center of magnetism. So if I wanted to move it further over here, I can do that. If I want to move it further over here, I can do that as well. So it doesn't have to be in the center so this is how it's a dynamic system. You can just move it completely like this. But I'm going to leave it in the center for all of these. And then the time in seconds is like I say, how long it's going to take for you, or for the player, sorry, to reach the magnet. So for this one, I'm going to go from here to here. So I'm going to set that to be one second. This one, you're going to go from somewhere here to here. So I'll also set it to be one. And then this one, you go from here up to here. So I'll set that to be two seconds. And then this one, I'll just put back to one as well. So it's going to take one second to go from these. So that will now work perfectly like so. So let's hit play and test this out like this. So I'm holding the left mouse button, nothing's happening. If I look at the magnet and hold it, we're gonna go over to it. I can let go and we fall down onto this moving platform that I have here. And then if I'm looking at this one, hold it again, we're gonna go over to it. I do the same for up there, we go straight to it and the same there as well. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've created a magnetic wall system in which if you look at a wall, Hold left mouse button, you'll be drawn towards it until you let go again, and this works perfectly like so. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.